Grade 8 math number 4.2b, the rate of change and initial value b. A linear equation, this y equals mx plus b, we now know that this m is the slope. It says in the slope formula, m, that's the slope of the line. When we use a slope formula, that's what we're trying to find. m stands for the slope of the line. And we do the change in y values over the change in x values like we've done in the last couple of relate, uh, videos. So, if we know that's the slope, well, we also know that x is an x-coordinate on a graph, and y is a y-coordinate on a graph. But this plus b, what's this plus b? Well, that is called the initial value b, or the y-intercept. I'll explain. So this linear equation is written in slope-intercept form of an equation. It's called the slope-intercept form. Whenever you see this, you know it's slope-intercept form, okay? And its graph is a line with a slope m and a y-intercept b, the m and the plus b. A linear relationship has a constant rate of change. It stays the same. So its steepness stays the same. It moves like plus 3, plus 3, plus 3, or maybe it's plus 2, plus 2, but it's constant. And we can find the rate of change, m, that slope, and that initial value b, which is also the y-intercept, it's the same thing, okay? We can find it for a line from a table of values. And we can look at a table and see the y-intercept, that initial value b. So, I hope you saw the last video, otherwise you're going to start getting confused because my videos build knowledge upon each other, okay? But, here it goes. When you look at a table, we learned in the last video that the x has to be a zero for the y-intercept. So on this table, here's the zero for x. Bam! Whatever that y is, that's the y-intercept. It's where the x equals zero. I can just look at this table and say, hmm, y-intercept is four. And if the zero for the x is not on our table, we can just work backwards to find it. We just make the table bigger by working back to smaller numbers. We make the next smallest number up here, and the next smallest one up here, and the next smallest one up here, until we do get to a zero for the x, okay? So I know you're used to seeing tables written horizontally like this, but this is easier because you can actually see the ordered pair. You can just put them in parentheses and see that's an ordered pair, see? Well, what we want to do before we do anything is make sure our rate of change is constant. So we compare these to these, all right? And these to these and these to these. So what I did was I compared the x4 and the y14 to the x3 and the y11. That would be y2 and y1 and x2 and x1, see? Just like the slope formula. y2 and y1 over x2 and x1. So the, y, the second y, y2, is 14, and we're going to take away the first one. That's 11, so we get a 3. Then we take the second x, x2, and take away x1. 4 minus 3 is 1. We get a 3. And we do that for each one of these to compare them to each other, the 17 to the 14 and the 20 to the 17, see? And each time I got a 3, we can also see 20, 17, 14, 11, that they're jumping down by 3s, right? And these are jumping down by 1s. So we know the rate of change right here is constant. It's 3 every single time for the y values here, okay? So the second thing we do is we make our table bigger to find that initial value b, where the x is a 0. That's where the y intercept is. So we work backwards. So our table ended here before. We just had a 3 and 11. So now I extended my table and made it taller with more small values here. Since these were working back by 1, I kept working back by 1. 3, 2, 1, 0. And because these were jumping back by 3, I kept jumping back by 3. From 11 I went to 8, then 5, then 2, and now I have my x 0, I know my y-intercept is a 2. See? The initial value b is a 2. That's where the x equals 0. So that y-intercept is a 2. That's this plus 2. That's that b. See? We said the initial value b or the y-intercept is that plus b. It's wherever x equals 0. Okay? So now, because we know our slope is 3 from doing the slope-intercept 
I mean, from doing the slope formula up here, the change in y values over change in x values, we got a slope of 3. So we can put that where the m was, and wherever the x is 0 is the y-intercept, that's a 2. We can put that for the plus b, okay? So the slope is 3, and the initial value, or y-intercept, is a 2. That is all these words. They keep changing these words. Why can't they just pick one and stick with it, right? So for slope, it could also be called m. It could also be called the rate of change, but it's the steepness of our line. The y-intercept could be called plus b. It could be called the initial value or the initial value b. But it's where our line crosses the y-axis, okay? So if you saw the last video, you'll understand where it crossed, okay? If we look on this big graph that I've got here, we can see that this line is crossing our y-axis at this point right here, right at 4. That's the y-intercept, see? This line is hitting the y line at 4. So that would be a plus 4 in our slope-intercept equation. But in this one, we have a plus 2. So that's where the line is hitting the 2 on the y-axis, okay? I hope that makes sense. All right. Don't forget I'm on Twitter, and we can talk there, and I'll post these whiteboards for study guides that you can save as a file or print, and I'll see you next video. We'll keep trying, and I'll keep trying to help you. Bye.